Uh, I am Coach Sorens, and I'm going to be presenting today on preseason conditioning. Uh, I explained a little bit at the beginning of our course how I'm a certified personal trainer. So a lot of the things that I would be doing, and we do them in your strength classes here at school, is preparing you for an upcoming season, making sure that you are strong enough to prevent injuries. Uh, you should have some notes that look like this. I gave you a packet while you were in class. If you don't have this, you can just take notes on your computer. But this is all testable material. Preseason conditioning. All right, definitions that you will need to know. You will need to know what prehabilitation is. Prehabilitation is when trying to prevent injuries before they occur. Uh, physical pre preparation designed to improve recovery time after surgery. So your prehabilitation is that's all the stuff you're doing in the weight room throughout the whole year, all of the stuff you're doing ahead of time to prevent injuries. And we think this is one of the most important parts of sports so you can actually play your sport and you're not sitting out with injuries all the time. Uh, rehabilitation. Rehabilitation is on the other end of that. Prehabilitation is before your season, but sports season. Rehabilitation is if you have an injury, what you have to do to get back to your sport. So an exercise program designed to help athletes return to competition after an injury or a surgery has occurred. That is rehabilitation. So pre before, rehabilitation is afterwards. Uh, Preseason conditioning is something else that we will talk about, a program that starts six to eight weeks at least. A lot of you all are in year-round conditioning programs for your sport, uh, but it allows the body to gradually adapt to the demands placed upon the body. And you will find, we see this with uh, just track, we'll use an example because there's, so many, there's hundreds of you all that uh, do run track. Sometimes there's those track athletes that maybe sit around all winter and don't do a whole lot, they don't come to the preseason conditioning that Coach Chatlos and Coach Peak provide for you and you're not in any of the strength classes and they go to the first week of track, they have 250 kids out there, they ask you to do hurdles or whatever the activity is for today and then we have pulled hamstrings, we have pulled muscles because the preseason conditioning was not in place. They were not, their body was not prepared or not ready to do, uh, meet the demands that were placed on it. So definitions there, prehabilitation, that's getting ready for your season. Rehabilitation is if there is an injury. And then preseason conditioning, that's our program that we have set up. Next slide, uh, strength training. There's a few things we were talking about. The first type of strength training is adaptation. Your body is going to adapt this to the demands that you put upon it. So the purpose of strength training, application of exercise stress sufficient to stimulate muscle fatigue, but not to se so severe that we cause breakdown and injury to the muscle. So if you push your muscle too hard, you know you can pull your muscle, you can ha you'll have an injury. We want to push it just enough to get it to adapt to a, a stronger, so it becomes stronger. When you are in the weight room, you guys are actually getting weaker. You're breaking your muscle fibers down. And then when you're out of the weight room and you're eating your protein, you're eating your carbohydrates, that's when your muscles are gonna build back up. Uh, and that's when you get stronger is when you're not in the weight room. You gotta put the work in the weight room though in order to increase strength. Progressive resistance exercise allows the body to adapt to an increased demand placed upon it in training. So we're constantly using this progressive resistance. So we're adding more weight as we uh, get stronger. So we don't just do the same thing over and over again. If I lifted, if I did 10, two sets of 15 10 pound bicep curls every day, my muscles, I'm gonna get that strong, but I'm not gonna continue to progress and get even stronger from there. Overload. Muscles uh, increase their uh, strength when they are forced to contract at tensions close to their maximum. So the ideal number for using overload, which is what you guys are doing in your athletic strength classes, the number of reps would be maybe between four and eight and do several sets of that. The last thing on here is specificity. This is target training to uh, certain muscle groups. If you are a, uh, let's see, a soccer athlete, a lower limb athlete, you probably work on more strength with the lower body but in our we don't use specificity a lot in uh, our strength classes here we're whole athletes and we do whole body conditioning gains and losses uh, two terms that you will need to know moving through the course of this semester is hypertrophy and atrophy hypertrophy is an increase in the size of muscle tissue due to conditioning so when you work out uh, like i said you're breaking down your muscles in the weight room but then whenever you're eating uh, your nutritional support, you're gaining that muscle. So you can see here, this is hypertrophy. This guy has gotten a lot bigger in his pre and post pictures. And of course we had to, if we're talking about hypertrophy, we have to have the rock somewhere in there because he is a great example of muscle hypertrophy or getting big uh, or getting bigger. 
Atrophy is something that happens. It's a decrease in size of the muscle tissue. This is often due to an injury or a sedentary lifestyle. As people get older, uh, when you're 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, people, you may notice they, they shrink a little bit. They're becoming, their muscles are wasting away. It's called atrophy. Another time that atrophy happens is when there's an injury to a muscle. I have a couple examples here. This is quad atrophy, and you can see how the quad is kind of caved in on that side, and you can just see the size difference here. Atrophy is the shrinking or wasting away of muscle tissue. It's due to an injury or a sedentary lifestyle. The motor unit. We have two different types of motor units, but a motor unit is a nerve, pul nerve plus all the muscle fibers that it stimulates. So here I have an example here uh, that shows what the motor unit looks like. But we're not going to get too far in depth with that. We're going to talk about slow twitch and fast twitch muscle fibers. We all have uh, different ratios of slow twitch and fast twitch muscle fibers. Some of you have more fast twitch. Some of you have more slow twitch. I could probably figure this out just by asking you if you, like for me, I'm a soccer player or I was a soccer player. And so I, I can run for extended periods of time. So I may have more slow twitch muscle fibers. If somebody is a sprinter and they don't want anything to do with running the 400 or uh, the 800, they probably have more fast twitch muscle fibers. This is your anaerobic. Fast twitch is your anaerobic. Um, and this is gonna get you someplace very quack, very quick, but it's not gonna last very long. You're not gonna be able to continue at that rate. Slow twitch, on the other hand, these are your marathon runners, you people that can run for extended periods of times. You have a ratio of more slow twitch muscle fibers. Again, we all have both. But I think we could probably determine if you have more or less fast and slow twitch just by thinking about the activities and what we're capable of doing, what we're good at. Strength training exercises, we'll talk about some different ones here. The first one is isometric. Isometric exercises are often used after uh, there's a surgery. They are also used sometime in core. We use them in core. But it's where muscle contracts, but no movement is affected. Uh, it doesn't hurt the joint. So a plank, if I was to do a plank here, then I would holding that in position, nothing's moving. That is an isometric hold. So I'm using, my sh I'm using my upper body, I'm using my lower body to hold in that one position, it's isometric. So if you could just make a fist and just hold it, that's an isometric contraction. Nothing's moving, but I'm holding it there. Often used after surgery. Uh, quad sets would be an example of that, and that's where you sit, and then you, your legs are extended out in front of you, and you just try to drive your, the back of your knee into the ground by contracting your quadricep and hold it for at least 10 seconds there. That is a quad set. Often done after knee injuries when uh, you're not able to do squats and lunges and things like that. So that's an isometric exercise. Dynamic or isotonic exercise is a muscle contraction where the muscle's actually shortening, causing the muscle to move the joint. So a squat would be an example of uh, iso, isotonic or dynamic exercise. Two different types of dynamic exercises or isotonic exercises. We have closed chain and we have open chain. These are used at different times through the rehab and the prehab uh, process. Examples of closed chain, uh, that is gonna be where the ends are stationary or they're not moving. So if I am in a push-up position, my hands are on the ground, they're not moving, but I am moving. But the distal end is staying in the same position attached to the floor. Squats, my feet are on the floor still. So that would be a, a dynamic exercise that is a closed chain exercise. Stationary lunges, another one where the distal end, your feet are staying stationary on the ground, they're not moving. In contrast to that, we have dynamic exercises that are open chain. Open chain exercises like bicep curls. So the distal end, the far end is moving on a bicep curl. Also, same thing with a bench press. So we're still, the bench press would be working the pectoral muscles just like a push up would be. But we can do that in open chain or closed chain. Open chain is bench, uh, bench press. Leg extensions would be another one. Uh, the next type of strength training that we'll talk about is circuit training. You all, later this week, Thursday and Friday, you are going to create a 10 exercise circuit training um, activity for a sport of your choice. This is going to be a completed one after another. We need to know a specific number of reps and a specific number of time. So if I had a 10 station set up in a circle around the gold room downstairs for my body sculpting class, or maybe it's soccer preseason conditioning, then we would 
I would spend, we could say 30 to 45 seconds at a station doing one activity. At the end of that 45 seconds, the timer will go off and you move to the next exercise and you do that for 30 to 45 seconds and you move to the next one. So it's on a timer. You might go through your 10 exercises one time, you might go through those 10 exercises multiple times depending on the time that you have and what you are training for. So isometric, that is a contraction that is held. A dynamic is where the joint is moving through a range of motion. We have closed and open chain, and then circuits is the last one on there. Stretching is the next thing we're going to look at. Stretching is moving the joints beyond the normal range of motion. Uh, so stretching, you guys, we know we do our stretches. We do dynamic stretches oftentimes with our sports now where we do our 10 soldiers. We do the lunge and rotate. We do the step forward with the arms out. All of those are dynamic stretches. Flexibility is the ability of your joint to move freely through its full range of motion. So your flexibility, some people maybe more are more flexible than others, and that's something that you can work on. You can work on your flexibility, how tight your muscles are. Stretches, different types of stretching. We have static stretching. That's where if I were just to hold a gradual, slow stretch until you feel a pulling sensation. So we've all done static stretching. It used to be more common. A ballistic stretch is when there's bouncing. So if I were to pull, I'd probably do this with lower body, but if you were to bounce and push harder and push harder, kind of in a rhythmic fashion, then that would be called ballistic stretching. Butterflies, if you uh, have ever had uh, your PE teachers have you do butterfly, that is a ballistic stretch. And the last one is PNF stretching, a proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Uh, you do need a qualified assistant, so somebody else is going to be doing the stretching for you, so it's not always uh, reasonable or time efficient in the course of a sports practice, but something if you have tight hamstrings, this is something that can be easily shown. And if we have time in class, I'll Mr. Sh Mr. Snow show uh, with one of you all what PNF stretching looks like. There is also a video, video that you may watch on PNF stretching if we don't have time to get it to in class. All right, we're going to skip that one. Ooh. Hide. All right, the next thing is cardiovascular conditioning. Uh, also called cardio aerobic activity. This is with oxygen endurance training. Our endurance athletes like cross country, soccer is an endurance where you have to constantly, you're running, you're getting your heart rate up, you're using oxygen, cardiovascular or with oxygen. Cardiorespiratory conditioning is an activity that puts an increased demand on the lungs, heart, and other body systems. Uh, Cardiorespiratory conditioning includes activities such as jogging, swimming, walking, cross country, skiing, and cycling are all cardiovascular activities. The main goal is to train the heart and lungs to use oxygen more efficiently. The more efficiently that your body uses um, oxygen, the better that you're going to be cardiovascularly, able to uh, continue your activity. The body's adaptations to cardiovascular training. First is increase in heart size, which increases pumping volume. So with one pump of the heart, the uh, more, uh, more blood flow, more oxygen can be delivered to the muscles. Resting heart rate decreases because your heart is more efficient. It doesn't have to beat 100 times or 80 times per minute in order to pump the same amount of oxygen which our muscles want and need to perform. Decreased blood pressure, an increase in resting metabolism, a more efficient oxygen transfer in the lungs. Those are all benefits of cardiovascular conditioning. We're having the same problem here. I think I have one more slide. I have to move this. Get through this. All right, that actually is our last slide. All right, so today we discussed preseason conditioning, how to get ready for your season. Uh, we went over prehabilitation, that's getting ready before the season, rehabilitation, which we'll talk more about throughout the course of our semester, but that's after you have an injury, how you can get back to your sport. Preseason condition is preparing for the season. Strength training, we talked about adaptation, progressive resistance, adding more and more weight so it doesn't become easy. If I keep doing the same thing and it's easy, I'm not building more muscle. I have to progressively add resistance. 
overload, adding a little bit more. So similar there, specificity. Like I said, we don't do that a lot. We train athletes here at North. Talked about hypertrophy and atrophy. Hypertrophy is getting big or the gains. Atrophy is the shrinking or wasting away of muscle tissue. We have two different types of motor units. We have slow twitch and fast twitch, which we all have a different ratio of slow to fast twitch uh, muscle fibers. Ooh. Strength training, we talked about isometric. That's a hold, an isometric hold. We have dynamic exercises like a bicep curl here. That would be an open chain. We also have closed chain exercises and then circuit training, which we will work on. You guys are going to create a circuit training workout later this week. We will have a Zoom on Wednesday that will introduce that assignment. Stretching, different types of stretching. Static, ballistic, and PNF are the three types that we have talked about. And I would like you to watch this video on PNF stretching. I will put that in the assignment list for today. I'm going to skip that one. The last thing is cardio review is cardio respiratory conditioning. You know, like uh, our cardio sports, cross country, we're running, we're swimming, we're cycling. It's a repeated motion over and over again that is using oxygen. All right. Thank you. Your notes should be complete at this point. Those will, you need to hold on to those. You'll need to have those in class uh, when I see you next. Have a great day.